Hello, this is Sophie Dawson from sophiedawson.com and this is episode 154 of the Sophie Art Podcast, which is a little podcast that I do about the art and things with my little co-host, little Dennis. <laughs> and this one is about the art because we're going to be looking at an article from the book Creating Stylized Characters by 3D Toto Publishing. And it's going to be an article called Gesture and Pose by the artist Ida, Ida Hem. So it's all going to be about gesture and stuff. So this podcast is also on YouTube at youtube.com slash Sophie Lawson. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'm using my old camcorder today. So the, the quality might not be as, as good as it normally is because it does this weird thing with like jaggies and stuff <laughs> but this article is so brilliant i cannot wait to get into this it's, it's basically it's all about gesture it's going to be in two parts so this first part we're going to be looking at what is gesture squashing and stretching building up from a gesture and then next week we'll look at part two which will be capturing gesture and exploring personality and gesture i absolutely love this this little article before we get into it though oh, no actually no i'll do that at the end because <laughs> let's just get into this so little dennis da, 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 he's gonna get he's gonna get us into it kitty little kitty she is <laughs> i love little kitty boing little dennis says they have a little kiss and it is it means it's time for action so let's get into it little kitty and dennis in their little house <laughs> let's get into this one so this article is from the book Creating Stylized Characters by 3D Total Publishing. We like 3D Total Publishing. 3D Total Publishing are my favourite makers of art books. I love their, their books and they also do the character design quarterly magazines. So this, this little book here is all about, well, creating stylized characters. <laughs> and it goes through the entire process of creating characters. Everything is in this book, the whole lot. And then what I like about it is they create various characters and go through the whole process of creating different types of different types of characters. So it's really fun, this book. I've actually done a click look video of it, which I'll put a link to in the description and the show notes and stuff. But this one here, we are going to be looking at the article called Gesture and Pose by the artist Ida Hem. Now this is a really big article. It's a, it's probably the biggest one, biggest one we've done so far maybe, and it's split into four main parts, which is what is gesture, and then it also talks about squashing and stretching. Build then it's the next bit is building up from a gesture. It's all about like the three step process of create, creating a character from the gesture. And then we go into capturing gestures. And the final bit is exploring personality and gesture. So next week we'll be looking at exploring personality and gesture and capturing gesture. But for this one, we're going to be looking at what is gesture, squashing and stretching, and building up from a gesture. <laughs> so what I thought I'd do on this is, normally I go straight to my main takeaways. For this one, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. So the first thing is, th this this article asks the question, what is gesture? So I thought it might be quite fun if we take, say, 30 seconds and sort of think, what is gesture? So if somebody's come up to you and said, what is gesture? What would you think about that? What would you answer that? And then what we'll do in a minute is we'll find out what they what Eda says. Ah, actually... So the artist, this is gesture imposed by Ida Hem, and you can find Ida Hem online at idahem.com. But she also has an Instagram, and this is a funny one. This her Instagram is at Ida something Hem. <laughs> so it's e is at i d a something h e m, which is quite cool. So, so what if you're watching on YouTube, you can see. Ida's little Instagram, but her characters are so fun. They're so fun. Really cool. Because I always think it's quite important that 
you're studying from artists whose characters and artwork you like. Because if you're studying from an artist, you are going to sort of bring some of their sort of techniques and style into your stuff. So if you're studying from someone who's doing work you don't really like, you might start picking up style things that you don't like. But her art, it reminds me of like 80s and 90s cartoons. (laughs) Sort of like a mix between Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and, strangely, the video game Grand Theft Auto Vice City. There's like a there's like a retro vibe to these characters. Really cool. So I'll put links to um I'll put links to Ida's Instagram and website in the in the show notes and stuff. So let's get into this one then. What is gesture? So what what did you think about that? What I this is what I come up with. Because before before I start getting into this, I thought I'm gonna see what I think and compare it to what Ida says. So what I said was, for me, gesture is capturing the essence of a of a thing. <laughs> That's what I put. It. It's capturing the essence of a thing. It's the foundation that everything else is built on top of. So it's it's very important, but it's also really fun because gestures are very quick. So it's it's, it's strange in that the the bit where it's the least amount of time actually ends up being the most important phase. It's quite weird that. So this is what so I said capturing the essence of a thing. The reason I said thing is because everything's got gesture. It's not just characters. Like like even a even a rock has got a gesture. So it's quite cool that. So this article, the way it's set out is we get like a bit of theory and then we what we do is we get these little Oh, this is brilliant. This is one of the best put together articles I've seen so far. Because what happens is, it starts out she's explaining what gesture is. And then what she does is, she gets, I think it was four, was it? Four poses. So she creates four poses of different types of, well, poses. <laughs> so one of them is like, it's a, what was it she said? Oh, yeah, the R pose. Another one is like the heroic pose. But so what you've got is you've got four different types of poses. And then what she does is she creates one using like good rules, I suppose, following the good rules. And then another one where they're not very good. So in other words, you get to see the same pose done very nicely and also done not very nicely. This is brilliant. I love this because what it means is you're sort of learning from both both angles. Because sometimes I've noticed you learn a lot by knowing what you shouldn't be doing. So this is what's happening here. One of the poses, you see what you should be doing. And another one, you see what you shouldn't be doing. It's, it's brilliant. So I love that. I thought it was cool. So let's see what Ida says about what gesture is. Oh, there's another thing about this book before we get there. They've colour coded the whole thing, which I think is brilliant. So like you got one section is pink. I think that's the bit where they're looking into characters. Yeah, character projects. Each of the characters has different colours. And then each of the like the things that but the way you're learning, it's all got different colours. Which I thought I like that. Little things like that I like. That's just that's the thing that 3D Total Publishing do. They really think about attention to detail, which is cool. So in my little notes, this is what I said about so Ida says, this is what this is what gesture is for Ida. Conveying an emotion, action, or some kind of non-verbal communication. I like that. And then she's, they put an example. Visually explaining someone's feelings of happiness through their body language. And that, 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 phrase, that, that phrase, body language, it kept coming up. Ah, oh, there's something else I wanted to talk about as well. So I love gesture drawings. How many have I done? I think it was either 200,000 or 20,000. But I've done so many... I've done so many gesture drawings. And I actually use a website called quickposes.com. And this quickposes.com is brilliant. Because what you can do is... You can set like timers. And then... So what you do is you'll have like say the 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 website will flash up say 20 poses and you've got 30 seconds to 
capture that pose before it flashes onto the next one. It's brilliant. It's really good because you, because it's doing it all automatically, you, you don't have time. Well, at first, what will happen is you'll sort of think, I ain't got enough time here. But then after about the tenth or, or so pose of doing one of doing it, you'll really get into the swing of it. And then you'll just, all of a sudden, you'll be just doing these amazingly beautiful poses. So I love that website. Something cool about it is, if you, what you do is every day you go in there, you keep doing it, and then you're building up like the amount of, it captures, it records how many gestures you're doing. And then you start getting certificates, actual certificates that you can print out. And I've actually got four different certificates that I printed out. So as you, I think it was like you do, I can't remember now, it was, it was all time based. I think it was 10 hours you got a certificate, then 50 hours, and then it was about 200 hours or something. So it, I loved that because sort of, that was motivating you as well. So I, I just, I really wanted to recommend that website. But what else have we got here? She says, gesture is used for conveying emotion, creating poses, conveying character's personality and showing an action. I thought it was quite cool. And then what I've also put is quick and loose sketches equals life and energy. This is what I said. It's really weird, but these gestures are going to be 30 seconds. So in 30 seconds, you've captured the, the essence of the character. So you've done it in 30 seconds, but that essence is going to be radiating throughout the whole process. So even though you might spend 50 hours working on your character, that 30 seconds at the start or the gesture is going to show through at the end, which I think there's something quite sort of paradoxical about that. The fact that the it only takes you 30 seconds and yet it's the most important phase of the whole thing. But the thing is, because it's so quick doing these gestures, what happens is, yeah, because it's so quick, what happens is you... Oh, I forgot what I was going to say there. <laughs> oh, that's weird. My mind went blank. Uh, I bet it comes back in a minute. Quick and loose equals life and energy. Yeah, that's it. Because it's so quick, you just you can just do loads of them. Like you, it's not You're not worrying about accuracy or something. Because you know if you mess up, it doesn't matter. You just do another one. But because you know it doesn't matter, you end up doing these beautiful things. So all a gesture is, is really just a line. It's, it's capturing the essence of a character in one line. Like that. So what have, we'll get done here, look. Explore ideas without spending time on the details. Yeah, so Ida actually said wasting. She said, explore ideas without wasting time on the details. But I always say nothing is ever wasted. <laughs> so I changed it to spending time on details. Also, what is gesture? She says, emotion and personality. So feelings. And I thought, well, that, that's the essence. The, the emotion and the personality and the feelings is the essence of the character. I love this bit, look. Viewer becomes invested slash connected. So this, this what happens here is, this gesture is what's going to, create a relationship between you and the character that's how important these gestures are and i thought to myself this is all like subliminal it's subconscious you don't realize you don't realize that this gesture is actually talking to you it's quite cool so they talk about the line of action as well so what the line of action is is it's basically a line that goes through the character so, like, um, for example, on, on one of these, you've got a character leaping through the air with loads of, like, life and energy. So the, the line of action is like a long, sweeping, sexy curve. And then in the, one, in the pose where it's not very successfully done, there's no sort of... There's no energy, basically. The line of action is just like a, a straight line, which is boring. So that line of action is, is like the... It's like the the essence of the character is in that one line. It's quite beautiful. What else did they put here? Gesture equals the whole in one line. Yeah, I thought to me, I thought that was cool. You're capturing the whole... You're capturing the character in one line. How amazing is that? And then they, what did they put here? Look, she said, understanding anatomy equals... Oh, I like this. This was brilliant. There was, where was it? She said something... Yeah. 
She, look, she says, a mistake, a mistake a lot of beginners make is leaving the line of action vertically straight, resulting in a rigid torso and a stiff pose. It is easy to forget. No, that's not what I wanted. What she talked about was, she talked about one of the things she was, one of the mistakes she had at the start was, when she was doing gesture, she was looking at the character in sections. So she was like looking at the head as one piece, the torso as another piece, the legs as another piece. But then what happened then was, when she did the line of action, she was like doing sort of three separate lines. The line of action is actually like a flowing, long, sexy line. So she says, when you're doing gestures, you have to actually see the, the see the character as as one, like one whole thing. But then she says, the thing that's weird about this is, when you're studying anatomy, you have to actually break it all apart. So when you're studying anatomy, uh, anatomically, <laughs> you're, what you're doing is, you're taking the character apart into sections. When you're doing gesture, you're looking at the character as a whole. And I thought to myself, this is very much like when you're doing drawings or painting. It's like a thing about s- stepping back. So when you step back, you see the whole painting together. When you're up close, you see the little details. So I thought to myself, that, that's kind of like that. It's quite cool. She also talks about the S curves and the C curves, which reminds me of Stan Prokopenko from proco.com because what actually happened was and this was one of the biggest mistakes i made so i started studying in when was it i think it was 2014 i, st- I started studying from proco.com because he's, he's got a figure drawing course which is amazing one of the first the first bit of that was basically gesture drawing and it was like you did gesture drawings then you did the bean which is like turning the what's it called the the body into basically like a sack like a sack of spuds that you can sort of play around with and then after that you go into like the robo bean and then you start building up to the more details but what i did was i thought right i'm going to spend a year or so doing nothing but gestures so that's what i did i spent all my time on gestures i didn't do any of the structure and then i was listening to the draftsman podcast when was it like last last year was it and basically what happened it I think it was a year before, it, what he said was, the way you want to study from that figure drawing course is actually two weeks on each bit. So in other words, you don't sit there and do... Because I thought to myself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on gesture drawing until I've like mastered it, and then I'll move on to adding structure. Well, he, it, what Stan Prokopenko said was, you don't, you don't want to do that, because what you want to do is you want to do... You want to spend two weeks on figure drawing, on gesture drawing, and then two weeks on the, the bean. So what you do is you do t- two weeks on each thing. And then you go back to doing gesture drawing. Because what happens is, it, well, this is what Stan Prokopenko says. When you go back to doing your gestures, what, when you know what the structure is and stuff, you'll, you'll start bringing in bits of that into your gestures. It was like, again, it's almost like what I was doing was I was taking that figure drawing p- course apart into sections because I thought that's the way I've always studied is to section things off but he, he was saying the, the the way to do it is actually do it in sections but do it as a whole which I thought was brilliant so in other words you don't ever become a master of gesture drawing that's what he said as well you're you, for the rest of your life you'll be doing gesture drawings so that was something I had to, that was a mistake I made really but because what he, he talked about that in, was the, the S curves and the C curves. So what you've got is the body is basically the line of action is, is going to be curves. So you've got like C curves and then S curves. So the body is like, and it's all to do with the spine. She talks about it here in this in this article. The spine of our body is is what creates the line of action. Like the, the but the, that line of action goes all the way through the legs and everything. It's cool. So what this article did was it made me think about the spine. Yeah, it, it sort of made me, somehow it made me sort of look at the body, but see the spine when I'm looking at the body, if that makes sense. It's almost like now I'm sort of x-raying the body. So instead of, when I look at a human body, I'm not looking at the body. I'm looking at the the spine or I'm looking for evidence of the spine. 
like the hips would be pushed out and stuff. See, I thought that was cool. I like that. So, but what she says, look, line of action equals a curve, character's spine. And then she said the curve equals natural flow of the spine. And then she put it straight. And she said straight equals stiff. We don't want stiff. <laughs> what I put here was we don't like stiffies. Yeah, we don't like stiffies. You don't want stiffies. You want curvies. That's what you want to remember with gestures. You don't want stiffies. We don't like stiffies. And then I, I put here over exaggerate. Over exaggerate. Again, because this gesture... Because this gesture is the foundation, and what I know is when when you start adding more details, all of a sudden you start losing the life of the, the pose. So if you over exaggerate it in the gesture, as you start adding the details, it's actually going to come back to where you would have had it. So even though it might start stiffening up a little bit with more details, because you've over exaggerated it, it's still going to be sexy, which I like that. But this article, this here, this is brilliant. So the way it's set up, I love it. It's set up with, with these four little characters. So the first, what I did was, what have I put here? Look, five, basically, we've got five poses. And so you've got, you get, you get five examples of strong gestures and five examples of weak gestures using the same pose. But then I thought, when I was looking at these images, so these images, what we've got is, they're like little... They're like little stick men, but they're not. They're, they're more, they've got like form and stuff. And I thought to myself, I wouldn't really call them gestures. I think they're a bit too, too, too detailed for me because my gesture drawings are very simple. My gesture drawings are very simple. My, mine have always been very simple. So these are a little bit more, there's more detail in these gestures than, than what I'm used to. But what I thought I'd do is I'll go through each little pose individually so the first one we're going to be looking at is a pose which i named it the r pose as in ah the r pose so what we've got is we've got a character who is basic well what is it what did they call it what did they call it a r uh, is an example same pose i uh, can't remember she did name it something, but I called it the R pose. And it, what for the positive, what we've got is a character who's they've got their hands on their head, and they're sort of imagine if as, if as if somebody's just witnessed their house burning down. <laughs> you know, that's the sort of thing. It's like you're sort of going ah. Oh. So the first one, beautiful one, you've got like lots of dynamism, I suppose. The second one is is just a lot more static so what i said was the, this is my little notes for the positive one i said it's super exaggerated hands on the heads with passion you can really feel those hands on top of the head as if it's like almost like as if it's going to pull its head apart <laughs> like you can feel the energy in those hands and in the weak one the hands are just resting on the bottom of the head so the strong one the hands on top of the head as if it's pushing the head down the second one, it looks more like it's trying to take its head off. It doesn't really... It's not really telling a story, that one. And then I've put... You can see the line of action in the sexy one. And the, the, the not-so-good one, there really is no line of action. It looks a little bit disjointed, I suppose. Definitely not any curves in it. And then what is it here, look? You can see... What's it? The line of action follows through to the feet... The line of action, it dictates the angle of the head and the placement of the feet, which I thought was brilliant because in the, in the good pose, the angle of the head is, there's an angle to the head. In the bad one, it's very straight on. So that line of action is actually creating, it's actually, that one line is dictating everything else about that pose. It's dictating the position of the legs. It's dictating the angle of the head as well. And then because it's dictating the position of the legs, that's going to influence the hands because for the, the weight of the body. It's quite it's amazing. So for the for the not so good pose, what I said was I said it's boring. It's a less confident pose with the hands under the head. And I said it's stiff, there's no curves, and the legs are not flowing. <laughs> I'll put a shite silhouette. 
So what what she said was, this is I love this as well. She actually keep she kept bringing up silhouettes. I'd never thought about this before, but the, because that gesture is actually determining the body parts, that is actually going to influence the silhouette. So this this sexy pose, the one that's done well, the pose is just the silhouette is amazing because you've got lots of exaggeration lots of space around the character and lots of shapes lots of shapes around the character the boring one there's not really there's only one sort of negative shape really and it's just a very boring it's a very boring pose <clears throat> so but i like that i like i'd never thought about how the gesture is actually linked to the silhouette that's something that keeps coming up in this what have we got here that draw ah oh, i like this what she said was she said draw or visualize the line of action before drawing the pose so i like that because she's not even ha you don't even well she's what she's saying is if you really wanted to just jump straight into the drawing at least visualize the pose which i think that's brilliant because it just shows you that you don't have to draw something. You can actually visualise it. But this goes back into why I think it's important to feel the pose. Because if you if you can feel the pose, you're going to have a much more, more probability of capturing the pose. Because you can feel it. But if you can feel it, you can visualise it as well. This next pose. What's this one here, Let? This one I called it. What was it? Oh, look! What I also put for the the first one was I said the gesture is like the story of the character. I love that as well. I, I'd not really thought about that, but I suppose the essence of the essence of a character is kind of like the story. So this is why the gesture is so important. The gesture is so important because. It's the story of the character. Yeah. I thought that was quite cool. So this next one, I called it the heroic pose. So what we've got is we've got like a, a super confident looking bloke with his head held high. And the, the one that's done nicely, what we've got is we've got, again, we've got an angle and a tilt to the character. And the, the one that's not so well is very straight on and boring. But again, silhouette as well. The, the shapes of the, the one that's done well are really nice. There's like lots of nice interesting shapes. The other one is just it's boring again. So what I put in my me, in me notes, I said the positive one is confidence. Head held high, his, his chest is pushed up. And I put there's two curves in one. So you've got your S curve. So you've got like the curve of the head. And then it, it goes back into the curve of the legs. It goes down to the legs. And what what Ida says was she mentions she mentions exaggerating by making the line of action more curved. So again, that line of action you could push it quite a long way. I like that. And because these gestures are so like thirty seconds, you can really play around. So you can push that gesture all the way to the max until you break it and it doesn't matter because then you can just pull it back again but sometimes it's when you go right to the extremes of exaggeration that you find like gems because you might not have pushed yourself that far so this is why i love gestures so much because it's like it's a really you can really play with the the pose with these gestures so in the, in the not so good pose what i put in my notes was i said he looks more curious than confidence so in the first one it looks like a it looks like a, a hero who is confident and knows that he's invincible. The second one, he looks a bit more like he's sort of thinking well yeah, it looks like he's thinking. It doesn't look like he's got any confidence. Basically, the first one, the one that's done well, looks like he believes in himself. The second one he doesn't. Which I thought I thought that's quite it's that really shows how powerful these gestures are. So I put he's, he looks more curious than confidence, which I think that is to do with the angle of the head, because in the in the one that's done well, he's looking up, as if like you know he's like 
iron the best. And this one, the, the one that's not so well, he looks like he's just looking to the left or the right. And I've also put a stiffy. <laughs> we don't like stiffies, so he's, he's a stiffy. There's no twist due to the spine. So that, again, that, that line of action, because it's curved, it, it ends up twisting in the character. So if the character is stiff, there's not going to be any twisting going on. So I said he looks flat. Due to the due to the spine. Oh, and also they, she mentioned the word. What she said was she said unlike a contraposto approach. As, so she mentioned the word contrapo contraposto. C o c o n t r a p p o s t o. And she said well, I had to look into that to see what it was. Basically, it's an Italian term. Page 15, it was, it was from page 15. Contresso. So, contresso, ah, oh, yeah, is an Italian term used for when the weight of the character is shifted onto one leg and the angle of the hips and shoulders move opposite each other. So what you end up with is you got the pinching and pulling, stretching and stuff. So one side of the character, there's weight to the character. This one here, there's no there's no weight to it. It just looks like a flat, it looks like a flat sort of, like a flat, a flat, a character made out of paper. <laughs> it's quite weird. What's it say? What put it here? Yeah, lacking this shifting of weight. So the, so the, the, this, the one that's not done very well is lacking shifting of weight because there's no angles. And then I also put here, organic nature of your human body. So the org the ne the human body is naturally like curving because of the spine. So you've got to capture that in the in the pose. So the next one, the next little pose, I called it the it's cold pose. My my what was it? My initial sort of reaction to this was the first the the one that's done well. You sort of feel a connection to the character. I feel like I. I just feel like I can feel her emotions. And again, this is weird, but these characters, I've got no gender, but this, the one, the, basically, the, the one that, the second one, the heroic pose, I just looked at it as a bloke. It looked like a bloke. This, this one here looks like a female. Even though they are just stick men, somehow, you're sort of feeling the gender you're feeling the gender of the character, even though there is no character. It's quite weird. So so the fact that I called her a her shows that I'm sort of connecting with her. I'm not just seeing it as just a stick a stick man. I'm seeing it as a an actual person. So uh, the positive one I'm feeling a connection with. What have we put? The silhouette can be strong. Oh, yeah. Ida says the silhouette can be strong without lots of action or movement. So this pose is a very... What it is, is it, it's, it's supposed to, well, she said it was a a shy character. But to me, it looks like somebody who's freezing cold. So the first one, it's like it's like she's so cold, she just is desperate to sort of, she's basically hugging herself as if she's going to freeze to death. But the second one, it just looks like it's a little bit cold. <laughs> so the, the first one, you feel like you want to go and just sort of give her a blanket. The second one, you sort of feel like, you don't they don't feel a connection to it. But the thing is, because all all this character is doing is got its arms wrapped around its like upper body and the leg is in front of what one of the legs is in front of the other one, creating a little bit of an angle. But the thing is there's no sort of negative shapes or anything in this one. It's a very sort of straight pose, but yet like she says, the silhouette is still very sexy because what they've done is the the leg is overlapping the leg in front is overlapping the one behind, so it ends up creating interesting shapes. Whereas the one that's not done very well, there's no, there's not the overlapping isn't very extreme, so it looks a lot more straight. And basically, the one that's done well, everything is sort of over exaggerated again. So I feel like the over exaggeration is what creating the strong silhouettes. So I like that. I like that she said that. She says, 
Silhouettes can be strong without lots of action or movement. That's quite cool. And then what's the inactive poses can portray a lack of confidence. Yeah, she said, she said, so she, when she said silhouettes can be strong without lots of action, she then said inactive poses can, can portray a lack of confidence. So you might have a character who you want to have a lack of confidence. So this is like, this is a sort of pose you would be looking into. There wouldn't be lots of action or stuff like that. Well, ah, oh, shy equals you want to hug her. Yeah, this one feels like a girl. So I've, in my notes I said, she, you want to hug her. You want to go in there and hug her. The second one, you just don't feel that. So again, this is how important these gestures are. It's making you connect with a character. If you connect with a character, you're going to invest. You're going to invest in that character. So if you're reading a book, if you see this pose and you're reading a book, you're going to keep turning the pages because you you want to find out what's happening to this character. If if you don't connect with a character like that, you might just stop reading the book. There's a storm going on outside. It's really it's raining. I can hear it. I love the sound of rain smashing against the window. I love that, especially when you're nice and warm. <laughs> it's cool. So for the negative pose, for the one that's not done very well, what, what have I put me notes? I said, yeah, I just said I'm not feeling it. I'm just not feeling this pose at all. And then uh, there's lots of straight lines. So again, curvy, curvy lines are like loving. You sort of, you feel connected to curvy lines. Straight lines are quite aggressive. So like curvy lines bring, pull you in. Straight lines are going to push you away. That's why a lot of evil characters have straight lines and angles. So again, this one's got like straight lines. So even the lines are changing the way you're feeling about the character. And I feel, I said, what I put in my notes was I said, this one feels like a boy. And then I've wondered, is it because of the straight lines? This one feels like a sort of a boy. The other one, it feels like a girl. I thought it was quite cool. But I'm, I'm loving the fact that these little gestures can have, a, can have a gender. It's quite weird, isn't it? So, because I've always thought to myself, what is it that makes a female a female when you're drawing a character? Maybe it is the gesture. Maybe the gesture is quite important for, how, for giving the character a gender. It's quite interesting. So I've also put... Well, what Ida says was, this one comes across as not shy, as if she's more cold. But I did think to myself, they both look like they're cold. It's just the first one looks like she is freezing to death. The second one just looks like he's a bit cold. <laughs> that's, that's it, really. And then, well, I've also put here, a strong line of action and exaggerating the squishing and sh the squashing and stretching. What is it? This is what she said in the notes, in the thing. She said, a stronger line of action and a greater exaggeration of squashing and stretching would help to push this pose and make the character's story clearer to the viewer. I love that because she's saying there's a story going on here. Which is, this is what I just said about like the lines. You, you're, there is a story radiating out of these little poses. It's amazing to me, that is. So she mentioned the word... Or the, fra the phrase squashing and stretching. So let's look into this. Because I, this is what I thought. What do you think stretching and, what do you think squashing and stretching is? In relation to these gestures and some poses. This is what I thought it was. So this is, before I looked at any of this, I, I, answered, I thought to myself, I know this is pinching and pulling, but only for the figure. And then and I thought, oh, Ida knows this, Ida also shows faces. And then, I, and then when I started reading this bit of the article, I realised I had it wrong. Pinching and pulling is like the angles of the body, like the hips. So when like the hips are going from, if the hips are pushed out, if you get like that bendiness of the body, you're getting like pinch on one side of the body and pulling on the other. So, But this isn't what this is. Stretching and squashing and stretching is actually what's that it's um vertical yeah so basically the way i look at this now is pinching and pulling is to do with the horizontal how the character is being horizontal stretching and 
squashing and stretching is the verticalness of the character. So I'd never heard of this before. I love this bit. So I put, this is what I come up with. I, I said pinching and pulling equals the angle. So pinching and pulling is the angle of the pose. Squashing and stretching is the compression. <laughs> so this is what she's putting it. This is what she says in the little article. She says, this is commonly used in animation. It helps describe orga organic nature of characters. And it's she's put expression... Expressis, expression, expressions men mention. Ah, oh, I can't read it. Expressions mention character feels alive. Ah, oh, expresses motion. So this 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 squashing and stretching expresses motion, makes the characters feel alive. So this is so cool. This is. What we've got is we've got a face being stretched and squashed, and then you've actually also got a, a figure being stretched and squashed so on the stretching one you've got a character with their mouth wide open and and the head has become elongated it's almost as if it's made of like rubber or something it's been stretched like that and then the squashed one you've got a character as if it's been well squashed like a hamburger <laughs> and you just what you get from this is over exaggeration of the face and then with the with the little figure, we've got a character. One of them is it looks as if he's trying to sort of turn himself into a rocket and blast off from the ground, and he's stretched, so he becomes not just thinner but longer. And then the squashed one, he, he becomes shorter but also fatter. Same with the face. She she mentions this in the article as well. So the main thing I put here is I said gives the character, it gives the character character via exaggeration and then she's put what she said was she said a rock is solid so you can't stretch and squash rocks but i thought to myself the rock still has a gesture was it look stretching thinner and longer so it, when it's stretched it's not just becoming longer it's also becoming thinner and then squashed it's not just becoming shorter it's also becoming fatter or thicker and then i thought to myself this is like a rubber ball it creates tension as if it's about to spring back no i think she said that <laughs> that's what she said i think she mentioned about the rubber ball yeah this is this creates the tension but then i thought to myself this reminds me of proko again stan prokopenko he he talked what about on the podcast once on a draftsman podcast he talked once about animating a rubber ball and about how hard it was to animate a, a rubber ball like bouncing because that's what you've got to do with, with the rubber ball you've got to have it stretching and squashing stretching and squashing it's quite cool that and then what i put in my notes was i thought to myself i thought pinching and pulling is like the it's, it's like the what's that what is it the angles it's like the angles in the the horizontalness whereas the stretching and squashing is like the, the verticalness used to exaggerate pose to make it more clearer this is something else i liked as well let's say you've done your little pose and you think to yourself this isn't really i like the pose but it's not really i'm not i'm not feeling it but i feel it if you know what i mean well you can start if you stretch it so you can end up keeping the pose, but if you stretch it or squash it, you can actually exaggerate it to make your to make your pose more clearer. Instead of just redoing your pose, you could like play around with. So you could basically you can start playing around with 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 this as well. I think this this I love this because I've never heard of this before, squashing and stretching. And then oh, I like this as well. What she said was, she said, when you're working through this book, make it a habit of studying the poses and becoming aware of the squash, of the squashing and stretching. What I love about that is, if you're going, if not just this book, but anything, whenever you see a pose, put your awareness on the stretching and the squashing. Because what will happen is, if you keep forcing yourself to notice the stretching and squashing, before you know it, you'll notice it without even thinking about it. 
So then when you, when you start doing your characters, you'll start incorporating squashing and stretching. Because what I've noticed is if you're not aware, if you don't make it a habit of becoming aware of something, you'll quickly forget about it. That was one of the things I, I struggled with, with negative shapes. Right at the beginning, Bert Dodgson in his book, Keys to Drawing, he said about these negative shapes, which is like the space between between things. Like, like he basically used the example of your fingertips. If you put your fingers out, there's like V shapes created between each of your fingers. The thing was, so I knew about these, these negative shapes, because the thing is, everything has got a negative shape. There's like negative shapes in your cup. Everything has got a negative shape because everything is interconnected with each other. <laughs> it's quite weird, isn't it? But so what I noticed was, oh, it's also, I had this with shadows as well. In Bert Dodgson's book, he also said about noticing shadows, noticing shadow shapes. So what happened was, at first, I just could not, I could not sort of notice these shadow shapes. It was a little bit frustrating because I, I really wanted to. And then what happened was I just forced myself to, I said to myself, right, I'm going to look for these shadow shapes all the time. So I was at work looking, everything was, I was looking at shadow shapes because there, there's, there's shadow shapes are everywhere. And then what happened was one day I sat at work on my, on my little computer. And what happened was I started, these shadow shapes started popping out at me. So I wasn't paying, I hadn't, I, I wasn't thinking I'm going to look for these shadow shapes. What happened was they started coming out to me. And then it's the same thing happened with these negative sh negative shapes. The thing is, at first, you've got to make it an effort of looking for them. And then in the end, all of a sudden, you don't have to do anything. You you just see them. It's it's amazing. It's like it's, it just happens naturally. But at first, you have to sort of make it make it something natural so that's what she's talking about here if you if you when you're looking at poses are looking for the stretching and sh squashing before you before you know it i need a drink before you know it they'll you won't even have to look for them anymore they will just pop out at you which i think i love that so that's something i've got to do now I got to, I got to be mindful of that because the pinching and pulling I can always see that because I've made that a habit because it was like Stan Prokopenko he talked about paying attention to the pinching and pulling but I'd never heard of this before squashing and stretching or if I had I've forgotten about it <laughs> quite weird so the next pose we've got I called this one the ta-da that's what I called it the ta-da ah. Oh. I've dribbled on my art book. That's a bit. Yeah, I've, I've dribbled on my art book. <laughs> so this one here, I called it the Tada pose. And what we've got is, it's like a character. Imagine a character as if they've, what would you say? They've just been proposed to by the person they are falling in love with. All that energy is just being expressed in one action. As if they are like leaping through the air. Yeah, on top of the world, basically. So you've got you've got this pose done well and not so well. The one that's done well, you feel like that character is like going to blast through the atmosphere. The one that's not done very well, it looks like they're just sort of. It looks like well, what I put in my notes was it looks like they've they've finished a race. It, the first one looks as if they've they've finished a marathon. They crossed the line as the winner and they could they've got enough energy to do another race. The second one, it looks like they've finished the same race. They finished last and they're about to keel keel over. <laughs> it look, so the first one looks like it's full of energy. The one that's not done very well, it looks like it's knackered. Which is quite weird. It's the same pose. That's how again, this is just I, this is why I love this article. It's very easy to look at these poses and see what is what's happening here. And you can see what makes this one well and this one not so well. What makes this one well is you've got the, the angle, the, you've got the curve. The line of action is a curve. The one that's not so well is a straight line. The line of action, the, the one that's done well, you've got a really aggressive, over-exaggerated leg in front of the other one, like a bent knee in front of the other one. The other one is it's le a lot more 
withdrawn, reserved. And then you've also got the one that's not so well, you've got like a symmetry of the arms. So it's a bit static. The other one, you've got different angles going on with the arms and stuff. But it's just you've got this beautiful curve going through the, the one that's done well. And there's just nothing going on with this second one. It's amazing really how that one line of action transforms this pose. So I put in my me, in me notes, I said, this is what I put, I put, the, the one that's done well, it looks like it's carefree, confident and full of energy. And it's super co super curvy, which I thought was cool. And I put, the line of action pushes the, this is what, this is what she says. Ida says the line of action, the curve, it pushes the the chest forward and the legs back. So you're, you're getting this like, what's it called? Opposites. One one side of it's getting pushed forward, one's getting pushed back. So there's like there's sort of like tension going on there with the with the with the line of action. And again, this line of action di dictates the body parts and the structure. It's amazing how, how that one little line is so powerful, really. So I thought to myself, well, that, that line of action, what it's doing is it's creating force, which is capturing the energy. Whereas the one that's not done very well, there's no energy to it. And again, we've got a silhouette, a sexy silhouette, because what we've got is, because everything is so over-exaggerated, there's just a, a beautiful silhouette going on here. Nice. It's very simple, though. That's the thing. It's really there's only what is it? It's basically there's only like three, three things going, three little sort of main sections. So the the one that's not done very well has got more. It's got more sections to it, but it's boring. He, <laughs> weird. And then in the one that's not done so well, I put. It looks like it's crossing a finish line of a race and it's knackered. Stiffy. <laughs> Again, we don't like the stiffiness. We don't like stiffies. And there's no tilt either. So the one that's done well, we've got angles and and tilt. It's just more dynamic. The the one that's not done very well, it's again, it's looking very flat and straight on. And I've just put it, there's no energy. And I've i put it in my notes I said, read about the string. Oh, I love this. This is a really cool little tip. So what she said was, well, this, I'll read the whole thing. She says, this is another leaping pose, but weakly executed and stiff. When making the line of action, imagine attaching a piece of string to the part of the character's body you want the force of the pose to come from, and then pull the figure in that direction. In this, in this case, the string would be attached to the chest. And, and pulled in a direct in a diagonal upwards direction. I love this. Where was it? Somewhere else. Yeah. Look, I put it down here. Look. Oh, I put it in the next bit. But basically, what I thought to myself was, she's looking at these little poses as if like they're little puppets. So she's thinking about the three Dness of these little poses. Which is cool. But I just I love that. I've I've not heard of that before either. So what you want to do is imagine a piece of string attached to the body part you want you want the force of the pose to come from i like that that's something to that's a nice little tip i thought and then the final pose i called it the zombie pose so what we've got is we've got a we've got a character who is well imagine imagine somebody's just got out of bed and they're like half asleep but they're really tired and they want to go back to back to sleep. So they're sort of like dragging their feet across the ground. <laughs> so the one that's done well, they are really, you can really feel the weight of the tiredness pulling that character down down to the ground. Whereas the other one is, is there's not enough sort of, well, it's squashing. The one that's done well, it's been squashed. As if it's been pulled towards the earth. As if it's been pulled back to bed. <laughs> the other one, it looks like it's sort of, it, again, it, it just it doesn't look like it's it hasn't got any energy to it again. It just looks like he's sort of moving forwards and a bit sort of grumpy. Yeah. So with me little notes I've put 
I've put this the the one that's done well has got nice negative shapes because what we've got is we've got there's like a triangle negative shape between the legs and then we've also got the curve of the back so it's like you've got curves and tri triangles going on the one that's not done very well there's just nothing to it there's even the negative shapes are boring because there's no exaggeration going on it's very sort of the the one that's not done very well is very thin the one that's done very well the one that's done very well is he's a lot more spread out so it creates a lot more shapes between things i've also i've also ah oh, yeah this is where she says about this th she talks about this week's inspirational quote this week's inspirational quote is going to come from this article and basically she talks about becoming the character so she says making a successful pose is, is about knowing what the character is feeling and what they are like and then expressing it clearly with the appropriate body language so it's like you've got to become the character if you can if you can put yourself into their shoes and imagine what it's like to have just got out of bed and be really knackered <laughs> i want to go back to sleep if you can feel that as you're drawing it you're going to actually capture it and it goes into something else that Bert Dodgson said in his book, Keys to Drawing. That book really is the best book ever, I think, for learning how to draw. What he did was, I love this, what he said was, he said, let's imagine you're drawing fur. If you just sit there and you're drawing fur and you're not thinking about anything, you're just going to draw, you'll just draw these lines as if they're, they're fur. Is it, but then he says, what you want, he called them trigger words. Trigger words, he said. So what trigger words are is, let's say you're drawing fur, you think to yourself, what is fur? So what you're doing is you're feeling the fur and you think to yourself, fur is fluffy. So what you do now is, you do this before you even start drawing. So now when you sit down and you're doing your fur, the whole time that you're rendering that fur, you're thinking to yourself, fluffy, 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 fluffy fluffy what it does is it changes the way you do your strokes because instead of just doing your strokes you're actually thinking to yourself fluffy because you're thinking fluffy you're feeling the fluffiness your hand is is you can feel the weight change when you start thinking fluffy you're you're touching the paper a lot lighter as if it is fluffy so this is the same thing here if you can if you can put yourself into the character, if you can become the character as you're drawing it, you're, you're going to actually capture that feeling in the character. This is why it's good to take, this is why it's good, I think, to draw from your photos. So if, if you pose and then take a photo of yourself posing and then draw that pose, you'll actually capture the feeling because you'll you'll remember what it felt like to do that pose it's quite cool what else here again string yeah she sees i put here she sees her characters as puppets i think <laughs> which I, I love that and the fact that she also talks about squashing and stretching i feel like she must do a lot of animation or something yeah she she she's very much thinking about her characters as if they are very as if they're real, basically. Yeah, I almost feel like she she actually sits there and creates little characters and then sort of plays around with them. Something like that. But I, I get the impression that she's a very sort of tactile person. Very sort of like a feely person. I, I like that. And again, with that string, you can, you can start having the string pulling the character downwards. It doesn't have to be going upwards. It, it can actually be coming down. So like all of a sudden you can start creating weight. I like that with a string. I think that's quite cool. In the negative one, what I've put is that I've said there's no negative, no negative shapes. It's, it all just blends together. Yeah, the, the body is just so boring that it all gets, it looks like a stick. <laughs> yeah, I've put here, look, no silhouette at all. It would it would look like a stick if you turn these poses into silhouettes the one that's not done very well would just look like a rectangle the one that's done really well it would it would you would see like these triangles and 
lots of fun shapes like I said curves and triangles a lot more fun that one and I've also put no sense of weight and then she said I put she said what I said because what I do is when I'm doing these this article has been completely different to the other ones I've done what I did on this one was I I sat here and I looked at the pose and I thought to myself I didn't look at what she had put I, I said to myself what am I feeling about this pose and this is what I've put in my notes and then once I've once I worked out what I was feeling I then read what she wrote to sort of compare it because I thought I like I like that this has been a really fun article for me to study from I feel like if the rest of the book is as good as this this is probably going to be one of the best books to study from for creating stylized characters that's brilliant it is and then, and that's it really so that's the first bit which is all about gesture and pose what is gesture we are now going to move into the next bit which is the final bit for this week and it's called building up from a gesture so what have i put in my notes for this one i've put right this is what i put i put this is the bit yeah this is the bit i stopped at with proco so this is what i said about with stampo kapenko ruby's figure drawing course what I did was, I, I, I got into this bit, which was talking about adding structure, but I've, I've, I got a bit scared, to be honest, and I thought, what I'm going to do is I'm going st- to I'm gonna stick with these gestures, because it, it, gestures just come so naturally to me, and I have so much fun with it. When I started trying to do this structure, I found it really hard, and also, I was getting a little bit, I suppose, frustrated with myself, So I thought, and I, I guess what was happening, the thing is, it's, it's weird. It's a negative thing to be feeling frustrated and to be struggling with something. But it's actually a positive because what it means is you're going out of your comfort zone. So the thing is, I know that now. Back then, when I when I was, when I started stu- studying from the figure drawing course, I didn't realise that. I thought everything was supposed to come easy. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit weird, isn't it? So what have I put here? Oh, yeah, structure. I put here, look, structure scares me. It's like eyes on a character. The, the thing with me is, I like to just... I'm a very feely type of person. And so I don't like the thought of sitting here having to get bogged down with details and structure and stuff. Which is quite weird because I I like focused on realistic work, which is all about details. Maybe that's why I've, I've gone through a phase of just not wanting to do too much details or something. I don't know, but... The thought of all this structure, it just to me, it feels like it's just too hard. <laughs> it feels like it's really hard, and it feels like there's loads of rules you've got to, you've got to learn. Because what you've got to do is you've got to start turning body parts into shapes, and you've got to start learning the anatomy and stuff. So I guess what happened for me was I, I got overwhelmed. I felt overwhelmed by it. But the thing is, like what I know now, because I learned from Stan Prokopenko, when he said, you've just got to do it, it's not going to be very good. You just got to do it, and go right through the process. Go back to doing gestures and keep doing that. So you, you I think what what I'm struggling with the most is I can't seem. I'm struggling with having bad drawings. I suppose. Yeah, it's why I don't do my eyes either. I don't do eyes on characters because they're not very good, and there's something about me that is afraid. I suppose to create bad drawings i suppose i want everything to be to be nice so i tend to stick with the things i'm i feel like i'm good at which isn't good because it means you're not going to actually evolve so it's something i've got to learn and the thing is this is where you start to realize art is all about facing your fears and the the process of learning art is a very sort of mental thing it's a very mental thing that's why i love it so much that is definitely why I love it so much. Very, it's a super mental thing. So, ah, oh, this is brilliant though. Again, this part of the article, I love it. What she, what she does is, she's turning a gesture into a final character via a three-step process. And so what you get is, you get, again, four different characters and you get to see three phases of the character. You've got like a gesture phase a structure phase and then like the more finished phase 
So this is brilliant because you get a little bit of theory about about building up the gesture. You then get you then get explained the three step process. And then you get four examples of the three step process and you get it visually via three little drawings. But also you get a little bit of information about what we're, what we're looking at. So I love this article because there's a nice balance between reading and looking. I think it's brilliant that this article has got a fantastic structure to it. It's a really fun book to learn from. That's what I noticed. So basically our three step process is the step one is the line of action and adding contracting and exaggerated shapes. Oh, also, what I also put was I said structure feels like rules. Gesture is very carefree. I feel like gesture is a, is a very sort of freeing process. That's why I like it so much. You don't have to think, basically. With gesture drawings, you're not thinking. You're just you're just doing it. So you can sort of listen to music and zone out. With structure, you've got to actually sort of put energy into focusing on it. So I do feel like sometimes there's a time and a place for things, you know. Maybe maybe that's just maybe that's it. Maybe the, the time I was in, in my life going through my transition, maybe I just needed the, the the freeingness of gesture. And maybe now it's time to start bringing the structure in or something. But so the step one step one we've got what have we got? Line of action and you start adding like contracting and exaggerated shapes very basic shapes like but everything is basically cube well squares and circles and stuff i've got hiccups again the second phase is identifying the six key body parts on top of the gesture and she says about the core forms being torso pelvis and head and she talks about exaggerating a lot that's something she keeps bringing up but what I noticed was gesture is the foundation. This goes right back to what I said at the start. When I asked myself, what is gesture? I said, capturing the essence of a thing and the foundation. So when you when you look at this, you notice the gesture is inside of the, the final drawing. So and, and the shapes, all the shapes that she's adding are, are being put onto the, the, the gesture, the line of action. So you can visually see the the you can visually see how the the gesture is the foundation of the drawing. I like this. So so what we end up with is we end up with a character. We end up with three little drawings. The first one is is like a little stick man, but you see like how well you see the head is like a circle. You see the the torso and the pelvis as like squares, and then the next phase we see like more detail but it's still basic shapes and then the final one we've got the finished drawing the finished character so that's what f step three is step three is finalizing the character on top of the gesture and shapes so we have gesture shapes and then details so yeah that's what i put i i i, I put it into what phase one is gesture phase two is shapes phase three is details and then we've again we've got four little poses, characters, what was it characters following this three step process, which I think is brilliant. So the first one, we've got a character who I've put, I put the word cocky. <laughs> so if, if I had to put a word on this character, I'd say he was cocky. He looked like a, he looks like a sort of, yeah, just a cocky guy really. And what I put in my notes was I said line of act, line of action first. It detect it detects where the body goes, adds add building blocks, and add animat was it animat an anat an atomical structure, <laughs> and shape language awareness. I like that. Yeah, so she has she's got basically she puts the gesture in, but she's putting the gesture in and the building blocks with the analot anal ah I can't say that word anatomical structure and shape language awareness so she's she's got the awareness of this is the thing this is when this is when what Stan Prokopenko has said is beautifully 
sort of described visually because what he says about he says you don't want to just focus on gesture until you master it because you can't you can't master gesture until you know about the shapes and stuff because the shapes are going to influence the gesture as much as the gesture is going to influence the shapes so I, you can really see that visually in the in this sort of example so that's the thing as she's do as she's putting this thing together right up from the first phase she is sort of thinking about the uh, anatomical structure and the shape language i think I've, i thought that was brilliant so i put here i put like rules basically what she's doing is she's learning the rules so she's learned the rules she's got those rules in her head so as she's in the fun phase of gesturing she's still thinking about the rules so she's bringing the two things together Something else I've noticed in a lot of the articles as well is this sort of bringing together of playfulness with with rules. And then the next character we've got is a sexy lady in a little dress. I like this one. And the first thing that struck me was her hips. So, where, well, basically the first one is a bloke, like a cocky bloke. And when she when she created the building blocks for him, like putting the big bastard basic shapes in, she made him out of squares. When she makes the the female, she makes her out of cur- out of circles. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? So straight away, we've got we've got that. Maybe that is something here. Like blokes are straight. Blokes are straight lines, and squares, and females are curvy, a lot more curvy. So again what you've got is those those circles are going to play through the whole thing because when she starts adding more detail in she's adding detail around the circles around the spheres whereas when she's adding details for the bloke she's adding them around like a square so so those built those those like building blocks are it's just amazing how everything is building up basically it shows you that how important it is the shapes that you're using, because again, like like the character is going to be determined by those shapes. It's quite it's quite mad, isn't it? I put here in my notes. I said curvy line of action in an S curve, so we end up with sexy hips, which I thought was nice. And then yeah, curvy hips, S curve flows through the whole process. That's the thing. That just that line of action. You can see it in the final thing. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's quite cool. The, the next one we've got is a... What did I put here? I put here... He, so if I had to sum him up, this character up in, in a couple of words, I put big bastard. He looks like a big hard bastard. Somebody who's about to nut you. He, he looks quite, he look, he's quite funny though. He, so yeah, he looks a bit like a, um, a wrestler, I suppose. And the thing is, what I noticed, this is what I put in my notes, square. Basically, what he is is he's a big square or a rectangle, two little rectangle, two little rectangles, I suppose. Yeah, and so basically, he is just a square, whereas the lady is a couple of circles. It's quite cool. And then I put, but yeah, I like this as well. Look. Even though he's a square, he's still got curviness to him. So he's still got like curves in his, like his shoulders are, are sort of curving. And even his gesture is curving. So I like that. Even though he's he's square, there's still there's still sort of like some sexiness to him. It's quite cool. What is it? Shapes more dominant than line of action. Yeah, this was quite interesting to me, this was. So with the other characters, I felt like the line of action was the key thing. It's almost like the line of action and then the the shapes were being put onto the line of act. It's almost like the line of action was the foundation of those characters. Whereas with this with this one here, I feel a little bit like the the shapes are the foundation more than the line. It's quite interesting, even though the shapes are linked to the line. And then what is it? Yeah, that's it. I thought it was quite cool. So that was it. And then the last one we got a little like a fox. I love this one. So what I loved about this was she says, yeah, I've, look, in my notes I said, read it, it's cool. <laughs> Same rules for animals. In other words, this, when I was reading, when I read this bit, it was so cool. 
well, what I, when I looked at it, I thought, ah, it's the same rules apply for animals, which is what I said at the start. Gesture is about capturing the essence of things. It's, it's not about just humans. It, like the fuck everything. But when I read what she wrote, I thought, oh, I love this. So this is what she wrote. She said, the same rules apply for animals and non-human characters as for humans. Establish the flow of the spine with a line of action, then build up the masses of the body according to your research and studies into that creature. I love that. Because what it means is, she's actually, before she's, before she's even started doing a gesture, she's been studying this, the fox. So that's it. You don't just go into creating a character without first studying the character or the creature. I thought it was brilliant. And then she said, the fox has a, a strong triangle, a triangular shape language. I love that, shape language. There's something sexy about that, se- shape language. I love that. It's like a hidden language inside of these characters to, with shapes. And she said, this fox has a strong triangular shape language, which makes it look cunning. <laughs> so again, the shapes are, are bringing with them a, a, a story. How cool is that? And then she says, but the flowing line of action help, also helps to make it look graceful and stealthy. So what, what I love about this is we've got this combination of the line and the shapes working together. The line, the line is making it look sexy and graceful. So the line is making it flow beautifully, whereas the shapes are making him look a bit, a bit sneaky. <laughs> A little bit cunning. I, I just think that was brilliant. And that's was, that was basically it. That's the four little characters. All we've got left is... There was a little bit here. She had a bit called Note. And what I put in my notes was... She, it says, Many artists explore gestures at the thumbnail stage. So, be, so being able to quickly build basic stages up from a line of action is very important. So basically, the, these are all done... At, when you've got nothing to lose, really. But what what I've thought here was she she mentioned the word T poses. So she says this part of the book is a is a bit different to the rest of the book because these poses are very sort of dynamic, really. They're in lots of different sort of poses. She says for the rest of the book, most of the characters are in T poses and I thought they didn't explain what that was and I thought to myself what the heck is T poses so I went online what T poses is is basically it's when you're looking straight on at a character so it's all very symmetrical a bit like a bit like that thing with um da Vinci you know that thing with da Vinci where you got like a hu- you got he did a he did a drawing of a human inside of like a circle didn't he with, with, with like the arms out and uh, a bit like the jesus pose on the cross so basically all the characters in this book most of them are in t poses where you're looking at them straight on and the reason they've done that which i love she's they, she says we've done that because it's so that you can focus on keep the pose simple to focus on shape construction I love that because what it means is as you're learning, as you're going through this book and learning, you're not going to have to be learning how to angle characters and stuff. They're keeping it simple. This book is about shape construction. Well, it's about all of it, but they want you to focus on shape construction. So they they simplified the pose. So if if you can get good at doing your shape construction on these simple poses, then you can start bringing in more exciting poses. Again, it goes back to that thing of being overwhelmed. If you're trying to do everything all at once, it's overwhelming. So what you have to do is you have to find ways to simplify things. So I love that. It makes me really excited for this book because that's the way I like to learn is simplifying things, keeping things simple. So my main takeaways from this book, from this article... (laughs) Is this is what I said? This is me, me and takeaways. I put this is a big one. That's what she said. I've, I put a nice setup. So because we have the theory followed by examples of good and bad, which I thought was brilliant. There's a nice flow to it. 
it's easy to follow and fun. Yeah, we've got examples with notes as well. Like I said, there's this nice balance between visuals, so actually seeing what you've got to do, and reading about what you've got to do. I like that. Really cool. And then what I also love is keywords are highlighted in colour. Example, line of action. So in the bits when they're explaining things, like the word body language is highlighted in a different colour. Gesture drawings. Emotion, personality, line of action, direction. What else have we got? Exaggeration, line of action, bold, clear poses. What I like about that is, you're going through this book, you can look for line of action and just go straight to that bit. So if if you want to learn about body language, you can actually quickly see the word body language and and read that little piece of the the article. I thought that was quite, quite fun, that. I've also put fun poses and characters. Again, like I said before, if the person you're studying from is creating things that you like, then it it makes it a lot more fun to learn. Because if all these, if I didn't like any of these drawings, I don't, you know, you wouldn't feel as excited to get into it. That's what I think. And also the poses are cool. So I'm really, I'm really happy that they didn't do. A load of boring T poses during this phase. I think that's quite cool. And then what I've also put my main takeaways: line of action is the foundation of story. I've never thought about that before. So I've always thought, I've always thought that the the gesture is the foundation, but I never really thought about the importance of the line of action in relation to story. Because again, you, you look at the line of action. And because you now know that that line of action is going to create the shapes. And it, all of it together creates a story. That's brilliant. What else is here? Fun, yeah, put fun looking at the positive and negative versions of poses. It's a good way to learn because you're learning how not to do something. I, I love that. Because you sort of think to yourself, the best way to learn is to learn how to do it. But sometimes it's that thing they say about an image says a thousand words or something. So if you can visually see something that hasn't been done right, you can sort of, you can easily and quickly see, well, you can basically see lots of information without having to read stuff, (laughs) which is cool. But I like the fact that there's words as well, because it sort of, it teams up nicely. And then I've also put the word silhouette. So my main main takeaways, silhouette is linked to the line of action. And I love the fact that the word silhouette kept coming up. It shows the importance of the gesture again. I also put the string being attached to the character is cool. Because it's it's a visual way of thinking about this. So even if I never put a string on a character, if I can remember about about the string on a character... Even in my head, I could visualise the character with a piece of string. I feel like that, even if you're only doing it in your head, it's a good way to visually see what the what the body's going to do with exaggeration. So I, I love that. I thought that was a really cool little tip. And then the final thing I've put in my main takeaways is exaggeration is powerful at all phases. So I never really thought about that either. I always thought exaggeration was mostly to do with the the gesture. I always thought it was mostly to do with the gesture, but it's not. It's also to do with the shapes, like with the squishing and stretching, because that's to do with shapes. So it's not just exaggerating poses, it's exaggerating shapes. And then it's going to come into later on as well. When you start adding accessories onto the character you can start exaggerating the accessories. And then even when you're doing colours, you can start exaggerating colours. And like details, when you start doing details, like hair, you can start exaggerating the hair. So what what this article made me realise was, exaggeration is powerful at all phases of creating characters. So what I love about this article is, I'll be honest, I went into it thinking, should I say this? I think I should. I went into it thinking I know I know everything I need to know about gestures. 
but I don't. And I love that. This this article made me realise how much stuff I didn't know about gesture drawing. So I just I I think this book is going to be brilliant to learn from. It's just it's going to be cool. It is. Oh, they also do this other thing as well. When they're doing the colours of the characters, they basically show you different types of colours of the same character. And they explain why those colours are, why they pick the colours and why they work and why they don't work. So it looks like the whole book is using the same sort of setup of having positive and negative versions of the things they're talking about to show you how to do stuff and how not to do stuff. Which, like I said, I think it's a really, a really cool way to learn. <laughs> and, well, next week we're going to be going into part two, which will be capturing gestures. Which looks really fun, because this bit, we're, we're getting more into, like, the characterness of the gesture now. Capturing gestures and exploring personality and gesture. It's going to be really fun. Doing he <laughs> little Dennis has said it's it's game over sunshine again. He likes doing that. He likes it in that thing. But well, I hope you enjoyed that. Gesture is one of my favourite things. I absolutely love doing gesture drawings. And this article has been fun. So much fun. I've really enjoyed this one. Really enjoyed it. So like I said, I hope you enjoy that. You can find show notes and everything at Sophie Lawson dot com and also you can find this as a video on youtube.com slash sophie lawson all that's left is this week's little inspirational quote but before we do that i just wanted to talk about a little book that i I finished about two weeks ago it's called the alchemist a fable about following your dream by it's by paulo coelho paulo coelho and the cover is amazing it's bright yellow orange and red and it's of the two pyramids and what this is this is a brilliant book it's a story so it's a fiction but it's about this little boy who goes off on a journey of fulfilling his destiny really but what it is it's it's a book full of life lessons about how the universe helps you when you're going after your dreams so even though it's a story you're sort of learning things. So it's it's almost like a realistic story in a weird way. It's, it, it's weird, but it's brilliant. Absolutely love this. It's one of the fastest books I've finished in years, <laughs> which says a lot, really. And the book is set out so nicely because what it does is every so... You probably get about, I'd say, two pages and then it sort of sections itself off. So it's brilliant to just sit there and read it for five minutes before bed. But what will happen is you'll get so into it that you'll just end up reading reading the whole thing. <laughs> it's cool, it is. He's also got loads of other books as well. So I, I really recommend that book. I thought it was fun. And the weird thing is, when I, I heard somebody talk about it on a podcast, and I bought it thinking it was actually like a, a sort of like a self-help book. But it, when I, when I realised it was a story, at first I thought, oh, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to read this. So glad I read it. Because, like I said, it's just fun. And the thing is, you, you can picture the little boy as well. And I think, I'm not sure, but I, I, where did I see it? Somewhere, it was either in the book at the end or something, it, they turned it into a movie. I don't know whether it's come out yet, <laughs> but they're going to turn this into a little film. So it might already be a film. I think it would be a fantastic little film as well. So that's basically that. This week's little inspirational quote, though, it goes to the artist from this article, (laughs) Ida Hem. I love this little quote. So this little quote is, this is what Ida Hem says. Making a successful pose is all about knowing what the character is feeling. Now, I love that because that's about putting yourself into the character. Yeah, so, so when you become the character... You actually, because you become the character, when you're capturing the pose, you're sort of, you're sort of feeling the pose as you're drawing it. Whereas if you, if you've not, because I do this with my photos, my little Sophies are based off of my photos. So what happens is when I'm drawing my little Sophie, I'm sort of, as I'm drawing her, I'm sort of remembering what it it was like to 
toes in that with your bum stuck out and stuff <laughs> so and then what happens is because you know because you feel what parts of your body are stretching and 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 pushing and stuff pinching and pulling and squ- squishing and squash squashing <laughs> Because you know what your body is doing, when you're drawing it, you sort of know what, what part of the body needs to be doing what. <laughs> it's amazing. So I thought, I think this quote is so brilliant. It's like one of those things to remember when you're doing a pose. I would say if you're struggling with a pose, yeah, act it out. It's something I've seen in a lot of these articles as well, especially with facial expressions. I've I've noticed a lot of article, a lot of artists when they're trying to capture a facial expression, if they're if they're struggling with it, they'll get a mirror and they'll actually pull the pose in the mirror, and then they get a feel for it, and then they can sort of look and study and say, when I'm pulling up pose, when I'm pulling up facial expression, my nose is doing this, my mouth is doing this, and then when you start drawing it, you sort of you put yourself into the drawing. It becomes a lot more intimate and stuff. So this week's little inspirational quote, making a successful pose is all about knowing what the character is feeling. Ida Hem.